In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of all creation. He's the cornerstone of all of God's plan. Everything is to be built around our Lord Jesus Christ for His glory. Because He is God incarnate. He's God who took on the human flesh. So, as Father Dennis Fahey so well explains, all the political, economic, and social order must be ordered to the glory of Jesus Christ the King. And that His law and His charity, His divine love, influence all mankind, all society. And God's love doesn't stop at his crucifixion. He wants to stay with us. He wants to live in our families, live in us. And this of course in our mind, by illuminating our minds by the light of the holy truth. And he wants to inflame our hearts and live in us by what we know in our catechism so well, sanctifying grace. Sanctifying grace is the indwelling of the Blessed Trinity in the soul. And by this, man actually participates in the very life of the Blessed Trinity. It's as if God, sending His Divine Son, gives us a blood transfusion, so that Christ's blood flows in our veins. And it's a greater love and a greater union, closer than any husband and wife, that God wants with us. That He really, He doesn't want to wait till we get to heaven, so to speak. But He wants to live now in this companionship, this intimacy, this friendship with all of us. And as, as Gerigou Lagrange, the great Dominican priest, used to say, God calls all, even little children, to contemplation, to live in union with Him, to live in this divine intimacy with Him. Granted, men have to support their families and work. Granted, good mothers, hard-working mothers are, have endless tasks in the home. Granted, everyone is busy and have their temporal duties to do. But we're not just animals nor machines. And the highest faculty we have is our intelligence and our heart. And we're supposed to use these things, ordering all these activities to the love and glory of God. So it is part of the, the, the satanic revolution to tear out, to make the life of sanctifying grace impossible as much as the devil can make it. And that is why he has worked so hard to rip Christ out of the public domain, separate church from state, let the most influential media and propaganda fall into the hands of the enemies of Jesus Christ because they will use these things and the education in the schools and universities use these things to tear the holy Catholic faith and our Lord Jesus Christ out of the hearts and minds of men and they won't stop there they will try to rip Christ out of the home out of every level out of your heart and your mind so it might be uh, worthwhile to def define a few words that we hear a lot but we're not quite sure what they really mean. Firstly, what what is naturalism? What is naturalism? Naturalism is defined as <clears throat> the denial of original sin that man is good by nature and consequently does not need our Lord Jesus Christ does not need his grace does not need his church. That is what the sin of naturalism is. Man doesn't need God. And this was of course the great sin of Lucifer. When he saw, Lu Lucifer saw all the gifts God gave him, he was the most stunning and talented and wise and strong and powerful of all the angels. And there are billions and billions of angels. And Lucifer's sin was, as St. Thomas Aquinas says, it was the sin of, I'm perfect where I am, I don't need your supernatural happiness. 
I'm, I'm, I'm okay the way I am. I don't need your grace. I will not serve. I'm just fine the way I am. And this is the horrible sin of naturalism. Um, Cardinal P calls naturalism not only, a, it's not just a heresy, it is pure anti-Christianism. Everything against Jesus Christ. So naturalism, of course, what's the cure? The cure is, we got to know our simple catechism. That we, and we don't need people to tell us how fallen we are. How prone to evil we are. How the mind affected by original sin is in darkness and ignorant. How the will is prone to malice. Malice in the will. And how the passions are all disordered in us. People flare up in anger immediately, or lust, or envy, or avarice, or pride, or, or uh, the spirit of revenge. These things that are in us, we need grace to subdue them, to put order in our whole soul and mind. So the answer to naturalism, which is a very Judaic sin because they rejected Christ. So Judaism is naturalism. Judaism is is the coronation of naturalism. It is and that's why the Judaism is so poisonous. So naturalism, what is the cure? The cure is Jesus Christ the King. The cure is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The cure is the grace of the sacraments and the grace of the true doctrine to free the mind from the slavery of, of, of sin. So naturalism is denial of original sin. I don't need God's grace, nor Jesus Christ, nor His church. What is humanism? Humanism. Pope Paul VI said, more than any, we have the the cult of man, he said. Humanism is placing man instead of God at the center of creation. Man as the center of creation. And Vatican II boasted that it had the, the, the real humanism for the modern man. And it certainly did. It ex exalted man as the center of creation. And the answer to this, of course, is put Christ as king. Put him back where he belongs. Whether man recognizes Christ as, as king or not, he's king. And, he, and the true humanism is put man in his place towards God. Man adoring God. And that means Jesus Christ placed in his proper place in every level of society. Jesus Christ the king. Subjectivism. This is another word we hear a lot. What does this word mean? It's a, actually a f philosophical word coming from Immanuel Kant and the modern philosophies. And the philosophies of the 16th, 17th, and 1800s, most of them were condemned by St. Pius X because they do exactly that. They put man as the interpreter of all truth. So what is subjectivism? Subjectivism is giving to man the power to determine what is true and what is false. Giving to man the power to determine what is true and what is false. Obviously we all have to decide and make good choices and decisions. But the, sin of the, the bad philosophy of subjectivism is the rejection of objective truth. And truth becomes what I make it. And this is a philosophical error, and it also influences theology. So subjectivism is basically all truth seen through the prism of man's peanut brain. And Archbishop Lefebvre said about Vatican II documents that they were saturated, permeated with the, the vice, the horrible philosophy of subjectivism where I make my own truth. And the answer is, of course, man must submit to the truth. St. Paul calls all revelation a humility and an obedience to what God has revealed. 
the submission of the mind to cat to the truth, to to reality. So this is where the true philosophy of Saint Thomas prevails, the the great Thomistic philosophy, Thomistic theology, which is really the only light for the intelligence to crawl out of this darkness of subjectivism that we're all permeated in, soaked in, that man makes his own truth. But it's not true. All truth comes from God. And when we submit to that truth of God's creation at the philosophical level and all the sciences, and especially at the theological level, when we submit our mind to that truth, it frees the mind from the darkness. And that's why what age has the most beautiful arts, the most powerful music, the most wonderful architecture, and uh, 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 the light of, of all ages. It is the high Middle Ages <coughs> where the Catholic faith prevailed, where Christ was acknowledged as king. And what, uh, compare the arts of the high Middle Ages and the, all the ages of the Catholic faith, compare them to modern art, compare them to modern architecture, compare them to modern music, and this is just an obvious contrast, opposition. The last is liberalism. We hear that word a lot. What does it really mean? Liberalism means giving the same right to truth and error. The giving the same right to truth and error. And of course the truth is, only the truth has rights. Error and vice and sin doesn't have rights. That's why even today, as, as far gone as modern world is, a criminal who murders bodies, that's an evil, and it, he has to be contained. He has to be imprisoned and even capital punishment. So even the modern world acknowledges this. But if that's the case at a corporal level, at a temporal level, a physical level, all the more the murder of souls is so serious. And that's why the Catholic Church has always had what's called censorship. Censorship of the press, censorship of education. Our, uh, the great Pope St. Pius X called for the censorship of all books, and all publications, and he would have added videos if they were invented then. And because you need to censor, because of original sin, they, these things need to be censored. Oh, the liberals hate censorship. They can't stand it. They say man should be free to see everything he wants and hear everything he wants. But this is not true. You censor your food. Mothers censor what goes on the table for supper. They're not going to put on sweet tasting ant poison or bleach or sweet colorful tasting candies that, that are poisonous. So liberalism says no, everything should have rights, evil and truth. So liberalism is a lie and it's a sin, a grave sin against Jesus Christ and, our, and Almighty God. So naturalism, humanism, subjectivism, liberalism, these words we hear a lot. We pin them down, and uh, let me uh, quote to you the great, again, Cardinal Pia Poitier. Satan wants to confuse and bewilder human beings so that they may give up the idea that there is an order laid down by God which they are bound to find out if they do not know it already and observe it. On account of his relentless hatred of the supernatural life, Satan detests, above all, the central act of humility, adoration, and submission to the Blessed Trinity, to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Satan strives to eliminate it wherever he can, and where he cannot do so, he endeavors to have it treated as a mere formality, not intended to influence life. He tries to get the young people and inexperienced to accept that they are on the road to happiness when they neglect the Mass and its significance for life and cast off all moral restraint and reject the claims of duty. 
On account of Satan's hatred of the supernatural life of grace, Satan has steadily striven to get every country that once acknowledged the essential or per se order of the world to reject that order and revolt against it. He considers that he has made a notable advance towards his goal when he has succeeded in having other religions placed on the same level as the true Church of Christ, the Holy Catholic Church. Satan is well aware of the anti-supernatural influence of that official attitude on the average member of society. Satan knows well that when error has become incarnate in legal formulae and in administrative practice, it penetrates so deeply into people's minds that it is impossible to eradicate it. That's Cardinal P. of Poitiers, The Kingship of Christ, page 52. When Satan knows that when liberalism, subjectivism, humanism, naturalism, anti-Christianism, the, the dethroning of Christ the King is put into the legal documents of any country, of the Catholic Church, it penetrates into the bones. And this is what has penetrated at the political level all the liberal documents and even worse into the very church herself with Vatican II. It's in the documents, it's in the canon law, it's in the new mass, it's in the new profession of faith. And that's why Archbishop Lefebvre said the only solution for all of us is a categorical refusal of this invasion, hijacking of our Catholic Church by Satan's plan and to rebuild according to God's plan which is the, the social kingship of Jesus Christ and it begins that he reign in us in our heart and our mind that we love our Lord above all things and this is why often, very often the only way to convert an age like ours is going to be the blood of martyrs the blood of martyrs and where blood of martyrs flow there eventually, as Louis Voyot said, there is a church built there to venerate that saint, venerate the bones, the place of martyrdom, and the church grows and it fills, and the blood of martyrs uh, fructifies into conversions, fructifies into a Catholic society. So let's ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, she always stands at the heart of all rebuilding around her divine son. With the Virgin Mary, around her comes chapels, around her comes the churches, around her comes the recitation of the rosary. Around the Virgin Mary fructifies, and with her, she's a garden that spreads its sweet fragrance, its beauty everywhere. And that's why the, the solution is quite simple for our age. At Fatima, she asks, consecrate Russia, pray the rosary every day, and do penance for poor sinners who go to hell. So let's ask the Virgin Mary. She crushes the head of the devil. Let's ask her to hasten that hour of triumph. And for us, we fight on. We fight on. O Mary, conceive without sin. O Mary, conceive without sin. O Mary, conceive without sin. In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Ghost. Amen.